Hi, welcome to Fort Bridger. I'm Sergeant Rasmussen, and we're here at Fort Bridger, standing in front of the new guard house today. It was built in 1888 and, and was used until 1890. What was significant about the year of 1890? Do you remember? Raise your hand if you know. Okay, in 1890, Wyoming became a state. And so after Wyoming became a state, then they decided, well, it's a state, we you don't need federal troops anymore. And so that was the end of the fort as far as the military era goes. Okay. I am dressed as, as a sergeant. You can see here on my on my arm, on my sleeve, there's three stripes indicates I'm sergeant. The stripe over the top indicates I am commissary sergeant. And then on the uniform later down, they got this dark blue stripe. There is that's an no that's an early uniform because they would fade, that dark blue would fade very badly. And so later on, they went to a, a yellow stripe or a lighter stripe in order to stop it from fading. Um, the coat that I'm wearing has, is longer, goes down to knee length. That's a, an earlier uniform, uh, about 1857, 56, and before. After that, they went to a shorter coat and because it, it helped the soldier, wasn't as cumbersome, okay? Um, and so you can see my kepi here has no insignias, and this is not a hat, this is called a kepi um, in the military, and there's no insignias. That's also early uniform. After, before that, the officers that were in charge would see a soldier and he wouldn't know where he would belong. So they decided they needed to, to make that where they would know where a soldier belonged for many reasons, but so about 1860, they went to this insignia on the kepi and you can see there's cross rifles there now this fort was an infantry fort and so that means it was a foot soldier the cross rifles indicate that i am a foot soldier the 21 and the h you see there on the kepi is indicates 21st infantry h company now they would have as many companies as they needed they start might start with a c company d company e company how many or however many that they needed at the time so okay you can see here as they went if they was around here non-formal just doing their duties every day this is what a soldier would okay quickly if you can you can hear that that is the bugle now with the foot soldier in the, in the fort everything was done and indicated by a bugle they were awoken in the morning by a bugle. They were put to bed at night by a bugle. They were called to lunch at a bugle. They would call the assembly by a bugle. And so that's why they have that. That was usually taken care of. Um, here at the fort nowadays, it goes every hour or every half hour. So you got to hear that. Okay, back to the uniform. This is what they call a blouse. And this is what the soldier would have used day to day, every day. Okay, and if, then if he... If it gets cold, this would be summer wear. It's all wool. All the soldiers' uniforms were wool. And then they would put a coat over the top of that. And that could be as similar to this or a little heavier coat, but it might still be short depending on the year. Um. <clears throat> okay. The soldier also was issued shoes. And these are not shoes. These are brogans. And they're brogans for a couple of reasons. Uh, when the army issued these, they were, there was no left or right to them. And so as a soldier wore them, they would break them in and wear them and then they would become left and right because of the wear. But there was a couple of reasons why they issued them that way. One is that they were less expensive to manufacture and to issue to the soldier. Secondly, um, if you were mustered out in the dark, you gotta remember there was no lights, no electricity, and oftentimes they were called out of their barracks or in their bunks in the dark. They could get up, throw a pair of shoes on and be on their way. It saved them time. So. Okay, the soldier, as a foot soldier, I carried everything that I, that I needed on my shoulders. This is a typical canteen. This is an actual canteen. You'd see what had a cork, cork in the top, but it has the insignias on there, it signifying where I belonged and who I belonged to. And as a soldier went out on campaign, now that's why they were here, to 
to tame the West, to take care of Indian or Native American problems. And, uh, and so as they went out into the desert, depending on where they would go, the soldier might have two or three of these on him, depending on the availability of water. Okay, this is a, a haversack. The soldier would put this around his shoulders as well, as you can see, it has the insignia on there. And inside here, a soldier would have a, a tin cup that he would carry with him. He would have his mess kit that he would take with him, probably some utensils of some type. And also in here, he would have approximately three days of food. Now you can see that this is not very big. And so what he would have in here is be some hardtack, some tobacco, maybe some jerky. Uh, and then he would also carry in this some personals. You got to remember that the fort in them days in the 1800s was thousands of miles from civilization. There was no Mavericks or any places to stop and get snacks. And so everything that they had, they might carry in here. And that could be a letter from a loved one back in St. Louis or Missouri or somewhere back in the East. Um, and so anything that they would have like that, they would also carry in here along with them. Now, as they went out on campaign, they would go change from their kepi to this hat. Why do you think they'd go, go to this hat? You can see it's got a bigger brim on it. It's a little heavier. It's made out of, out of felt. Sometimes they were made out of beaver, but not very often because that was expensive. Well, you're right. This was used in order to protect them from the elements as they went out on campaign. And when I would say go out on campaign, that means they left the fort and went out and took care of their duties. But this was to protect them as they were out walking through the desert. Okay, this is, again, this is what is termed as a, as a, as a bed roll or a blanket roll or a horse collar. And it looks, if you know anything about horses, a horse collar, as a horse will pull something, this will go around their neck. And that's what the soldiers would do with it. They would put it around their shoulders like this. And you got to remember the soldier carried everything that he took, that he, they would go out on campaign with. And inside here would be a blanket, this outside covering, some rope, some tent pegs. And the interesting thing about this is, is this is big enough for one person but it was only half of their tent. And so two soldiers would get together, they would tie the top together, they would stake the bottom, and two people would sleep inside that, and that was their tent. Also inside here, a soldier might sneak in a few, something that the, that the didn't want the officers to know about. You know, if, he ha if it was available, maybe a drink or a personal, maybe some extra hardtack or jerky, something that he kind of wanted to keep hidden. But you got to remember, anything that he did added weight. This is a cartridge belt. This is they'd strap this around their waist. This holds anywhere from 40 to 70 cartridges, depending on the size of the individual. And you can see everything was marked U.S. Okay, now we're going to get into. Around the fort, they would have dances, they would have, go have meetings with the officers and that type of thing. Sometimes they would have to dress up. In today's World Ar Army, uh, they call it dress blues often. But you can see this is, is a much fancier belt, and this also has a cartridge. And they would, this would carry 20 cartridges. The Ar Army man of the day never went anywhere unarmed. He always was armed with something. And so he would take his take his uh, cartridges with him, and if he was going formal uh, to the dance or something, they would still be armed. Now in this as well, uh, the, the soldier always carried his rifle with him, particularly around the fort or if he was going out. If he was going out on campaign, he would take this with him. This is a bayonet. And this goes on the end of the gun, it slides over the barrel and then twists and locks. You can see that, I don't know if you can see it on the video, but it, it's a, shaped in a triangle shape, has two ribs on the back, on either side and one down the middle. That is on purpose because the wound would become a triangle wound. The reason they wanted to make a triangle wound is because if the, if the initial stabbing or contact didn't kill you, 
then the infection from the wound probably would because that was two reasons they wanted to do that because the infection would get you and a sick soldier it takes three to four soldiers in order to take care of a sick soldier and so that would take that many more people away from the fighting so. okay I talked about, about formal uniform you can see this here is is a hat this is patterned after the prussian army now in the 1800s the prussian army was one of the premier armies in the world and so you can see it's very ornate it's all gold and it this was used strictly for formal wear so if i was going to the dance or do the officers meeting or something to that effect where i really really had to dress up this was this is what i would wear but you can see the point on the top has no purpose other than just show. It would just ornate, that's all. I often get the question, you know, could they use that as a weapon? No, the answer is no. <laughs> it's just simply decoration, so. Okay, I'm gonna step inside the guardhouse and we're gonna go over what that looks like inside for you. And uh, we'll do that now. Okay, we're inside the new guardhouse now, and what we're looking at here, this is the jail cell, and this is the general cell where a soldier would be brought that would be court-martialed. Now, a court-martialed soldier would be fined and brought in here for something as small an infraction as losing a button on his uniform. And so he would be brought in here. You can see in the corner there's one blanket. That's all he would have, one blanket, a wool blanket, and a bucket. Now, the bucket was used for, what do you think that would be used for? If you guessed toiletries or bathroom uses, you're, you're right. And so there could be anywhere from one to maybe 20, 25 people in here, depending on what was going on and the amount of troops. But as an officer of the day, I am not going to empty that bucket for you. I'm going to put you under guard and you will empty your own toilet bucket. You would be taken out to the latrine, empty it, and brought back but under guard. And so you can feel it's a little bit cooler in here um, also. And so why don't you come on out and, and we will uh, explain what happens to a soldier when he's brought in here in the winter. You have one wool blanket, and that's the only thing you're going to have. You're laying or sitting on a wood floor that is cold. And we all know how cold it can get in Wyoming. 20 below is not, is not uncommon. And so the only way that you could get another blanket or something to sit on or lay on were by two ways. One by the officer or the colonel here at the fort, the commanding officer, or the doctor. And oftentimes there was not a doctor here at the fort. And so to get the officer, the commanding officer, to come and worry about a guy that's in in the jail cell is not going to be a high priority so you may be in there cold for a long time depending on what your infraction was and so being court-martialed could be in many many things you sassed an officer you broke one of the rules and that like say if i lose a button and an officer catches me i could be court-martialed and fined so that's not a happy place to be we're going to close that right now okay as officer of the day or duty officer I would be required to take care of the guards underneath me. We're going to walk in here, and this would be my office or my headquarters where I would take care of the, the duties. I would be on duty 24 hours from 8 a.m. in the morning till 8, 8 a.m. the next morning. I would not be allowed to sleep, although there is a bed I could lay down and rest, but it, was not, it, was, it could be court-martialed if I actually went to sleep. Now you see, as a duty officer, I have a desk. On this desk, I would have a couple of things. Um, the duty roster, the names of the prisoners that are in, in the cell here at the time. I have maps and uh, so that I know the area if I had to go out somewhere on campaign. Also, I have some letters here that are, would, and these would be either from the commanding officer or my superior officer and on what to do and what they wanted me to do. 
Right. You can see this letter is an interesting letter, and it's very, very faded. But the date on this letter is 1885, which is, you know, kind of makes it come to life. So, on the walls you will see that there are maps and things of the area. Uh, these, these would be important if I was commanded by my superior officer to go out and, and go on campaign or that type of thing. Um, it was important that I knew the area and knew where I was. So. All right, we're, next we're going to take you into the solitary cell. Now, the solitary cell is about four foot by eight foot, and you would be in there by yourself. This is where they would put the hard criminals, uh, murderers or somebody who was was bad in many ways. And I won't go, in, won't go into how bad or what they did. But if, if you was bad, this is where they would put you. Again, in here, you would have a blanket and a bucket. That would be it. And your meals would be very scarce. You would get maybe one meal a day, and that would be it. And it wouldn't be a very good meal, whatever was available at the fort that nobody else wanted, basically. And so I'm gonna let you go in here. I'll open the door and let you go in and take a look. Okay, we're going to go over what the military used for armament and for the rifles. The foot soldier would have carried one of these with them. This is a Springfield trapdoor rifle. And these were invented specifically for the military by the Springfield Arms Company. And it's called a trapdoor for this little item right here. That little item that flips up. And that's important because when they invented this rifle, they started about 1865. And this is a, an 1874 model. They continually improved that. But the important thing about this is that before this, they had the old cap and ball, the black powder type rifles. And they, a really good guy that was really good at loading one of them could shoot about every oh, 30 seconds, 30 to 45 seconds. The firepower, this increased that firepower to anywhere between seven to 10 times per minute. And so you can see that the firepower increased substantially by doing that. And so, and this was used until, up, until about 1885. And then they started with the repeater rifles after that. But this was again built by the Springfield Arms. You can see this is a cartridge, the size of the cartridge that it would have used. There would have been a 45 grain lead bullet on top of this, and this is a blank. And it's a 4570, meaning there's 70 grains of powder inside. Got quite a powerful rifle. This has also had rifling inside the barrel, so it was, again, much more accurate, very accurate. And so you just slide this cartridge inside, close the trap door, and you're ready to go. Now, when I pop this open it, after I fire, that shell re ejects automatically and all I have to do is pick another shell and put it in there. Now I'm going to fire this for you today and it's a little bit loud so if you want to plug your ears you feel free but uh, out here in the open it's not too bad. If you have any questions about it? Oh, the bayonet, that's a good question. Okay the bayonet would have gone on the end of the barrel it slides on and then twists and that's what holds it on and would have come out out here to the side this direction here and so okay I'm going to fire this for you. Here we go. This ends our tour for today. We're so glad that you was able to come to Fort Bridger. We appreciate it. Come back and see us. Thank you.